Hello, I'm Dr. Hemant Tantani. I'm a consultant physician and practicing for the last 35 years. Well, we are all passing through the trying times we have never seen before. COVID-19 has engulfed the entire world in terror. And it is imperative as a medical personnel to let you know the right information, the professional information, everything that you should know about COVID-19. So here is my attempt to let you know everything that you should know about COVID-19. The virus which has brought the entire need, the entire world to a great despair, a lot of fear is around, a lot of apprehension is around. And we thought that this is the right time that we should give the scientific knowledge on COVID-19 so that it will help us to harness this dangerous virus and make us everybody safe. So let's start what I'm going to talk about on understanding COVID-19. The first question would be, what exactly is coronavirus? Coronavirus is, uh, was, was first actually were identified in 1960s. And these are the viruses which are widespread among birds and mammals, with bats being host to the largest variety of genotypes. And the name coronavirus is derived from Latin word corona, meaning crown. You can see it's like a crown here. In fact, there are seven coronaviruses which have been shown to infect humans so far. And let me tell you that we have been subjected to simple coronaviruses for quite long time. And in fact, they cause common cold. There are four varieties of coronaviruses. But three varieties of coronaviruses have created havoc so far. The first was the SARS and second one was MERS, which was Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and SARS, which was Severe Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome, and COVID-19, which we are facing right now. Uh, I know there are some still non-medical people, and you must be hearing the words epidemic and pandemic. So let me tell you what exactly these words are. The epidemic is a rapid spread of disease to a large number of people in a given population within a short period of time. And pandemic is a disease epidemic that has spread across a large region, for instance, multiple continents or worldwide. As on 12th March 2020, this COVID-19 was declared as a pandemic by World Health Organization for the simple reason that it has gone into multiple countries and continents. Now let's talk about COVID-19. Actually, if you look at is SARS-CoV-2 or CO2. Why this name? Because SARS was also by coronavirus uh, and that was the name was given was SARS-CoV-1. And because this virus is pretty similar to this SARS-CoV, that's why the name given is SARS-CoV-2, but then for common way it is called as COVID-19. And that this new virus and disease were unknown before the outbreak began in China in December 2019. Imagine in November 2019, nobody knew about the existence of this virus. And that, what is, that is what makes the virus pretty dangerous. So let's see how exactly this happened. Why this COVID-19 happened? Well, the viruses always have some basic hosts. And in this case, it was bad. All of us know that bat and rat are the two dangerous animals which carry lots of viruses within them, rodents and bat. So the bat actually have 130 virus out of which 61 are zoonotic. What it means is that these viruses can actually pass on the disease to and infect the humans. But what happens that most of the times they cannot directly infect the humans and that's why they need to have some intermediate host to pass on this virus. Now it's not 100% certain, but most of the researchers believe that in this case, the intermediate host is pangolin. Now, pangolin is a very exotic wild animal, which is available and very, in fact, very popular in China. And this animal is also very peculiar. You can see a lot of scales, and then these scales are considered to be pretty sacred, and they actually are dried up and used for varieties of things in China. And also, they also eat also. So this, and one more thing I want to make it clear, that very well-cooked, uh, you know, any non-vegetarian, Food is not going to give you virus. What gives you virus is handling the raw animals, the raw vegetables, either it's the raw food or the animals that you are handling. That will give you the virus uh, ex exposure. So this pangolin, while handled, being handled by people in China, actually gave uh, this virus to the humans. And there came the start of COVID-19, which became has become a kind of a disaster now. So what exactly is incubation period? Uh, for this virus, it is 1 to 14 days, and most cases occur approximately 4 to 5 days after exposure. 
Now, for the people who are not, not, not medical, let me tell you what incubation period is. Incubation period is the time from the virus enters into human body from that time to the person who develops the symptoms. For example, if you have a virus which has gone into your body today, and if you start developing fever, coughing, and uh, all other symptoms, after less than six days, your incubation period is called six days. So that means this incubation period is found to be up to 14 days, and that is the reason why people are quarantined for 14 days. So that should answer your question, why 14 days? Now, the question is that why is COVID-19 transmitted with such a big uh, way? So the most important way is a large drop, droplet transmission. As we saw in the video, anybody who sneezes or coughs, this can occur via a large droplet transmission. And this risk is limited to six feet from the patient. And transmission via large droplet transmission can be prevented by using a standard surgical style mask. That's something very important, which I'm going to take up a little later. Another thing which makes this virus even more dangerous uh, enemy is that the contact transmission is very strong from fomites to phase. Now, these fomites is nothing but the surfaces on which uh, this virus is actually settled. So what happens? The person with coronavirus cups emitting large droplets containing the virus. Droplets settle on the surfaces in the room, creating a thin film of coronavirus. And this coronavirus may persist on surface for a few hours to several days, according to World Health Organization. And this may vary under different conditions. That means the type of surface, the temperature, or the humidity of environment, so on and so forth. And someone else who would touch this contaminated surface hours or days later will transfer the virus to their hands. And if the dense touch the mucous membrane, eyes, nose, or mouth, this may transmit the infection. So you must be listening, you must be seeing, you must be getting instructed, you know, day in and day out that you should not touch your eyes, nose, or mouth. Now you understand the reason why. Because if your hands have contracted virus, actually you are passing this virus to your mucous membrane from where it can enter into your body and can make you sick. So please do not actually touch eyes, nose, and mouth when you're sneezing or when you're in a type of epidemic without washing your hands. Airborne transmission is fortunately, most of the authorities believe, is not the case in COVID-19. And actually, we are kind of saved. But some people have still raised that doubt. But as of now, the airborne transmission is not in the offing. So what happens if somebody gets COVID-19? What are the symptoms? Let, let's look at the symptoms. Fever, fatigue, dry cough, anorexia means weight, uh, the decreased appetite or no appetite. Myalgia means a lot of body ache. And dyspnea is a difficulty in breathing, which generally happens after five days of illness. Now, what happens in this? If you look at the symptoms, fever, fatigue, dry cough, anorexia, myalgia, dyspnea. Now, these are not very typical of only COVID-19. And that is what it makes the things very difficult for clinicians, for the patients, and for everybody. Because these kind of symptoms can also happen with your influenza, the seasonal influenza that we get every year, or some kind of mild respiratory infection, which is not because of COVID-19. And that is where the panic actually comes that everybody feels who gets a kind of fever and cold, they feel that they have got COVID-19 and that's what is happening right now. So my message to everybody is that please do not panic. There are certain ways by which the clinician will be able to let you know if there is a suspicion of COVID-19. So if you are getting a cough and cold tomorrow, do not think that you have got COVID-19 for sure. And there are very less common symptoms are sore throat, headache and rhinorrhea. Now, I'm not saying that this is a rule of thumb, but many people have believed that running of nose is not a symptom of COVID-19. But having said that, I don't say that if you have running of most, you don't have COVID-19. But this is just an observation. Dry coughing is pretty typical of COVID-19. But then once again, as I said, that this is just an observation. It can happen in other diseases as well. Now, after seeing this epidemic in China and so many patients and now further on, which has spread all over the world, now several clinical features have come to the light. And I think that that should be very important for everybody to know. And what are they? 87% of the patients were between 30 and 79 years old. And older people were associated with increased mortality. In 70 to 79 years, it was 8%. And more than 80 years, it was 15%. So that's why I have to really give appeal my all old patients who are with diabetes, hypertension, and other comorbidities. Please do not go to your doctor for your routine consultation at least for next two weeks. 
The reason is very simple that you are the vulnerable population and you just have to go and just continue your medicine. You can always take that advice on phone, but in, only in case of emergency, you should go to your doctor. Otherwise, please stay indoors. I would repeat, please stay indoor and that would be with great help to your health as well as to the community in general. Very heartening feature in which I want everybody of you to take note of is 81% of the patient have very mild symptoms. Very heartening. And that's why you really should not panic. 14% had severe disease. 5% had critical disease. And the recovery time, according to World Health Organization, is around two weeks for the mild infected people and three to six weeks after the severe disease. So that makes it very clear. Now, next question is that, well, how do I know that I have got COVID-19? Okay, so how, here we go. Now, the blood feature, just like clinical feature, there are no features which are very typical of COVID-19. But some of the observations are seen. If you see the first one, if you do the blood count and those who are, you know, non-medical, you must have seen whenever you had your blood test in your CBC, you will find there's something called as lymphocytes. Now, COVID-19, it is found that there is a tremendous decrease in the count of lymphocytes, which is called as lymphopenia. And the CRP ferritin are high, LDH is high, the SGPD, that is uh, liver enzymes are high. But if you see the dimer, which is one of the, you know, tests. Now, after having so many studied, so many patients in China, they came to this conclusion that people who had a severe lymphopenia and the dimer have been prognostic. So all those my medical friends, this is one thing which is very interesting, which we should, we can keep in mind. Uh, then next is, of course, CT lung imaging is not the, uh, the diagnostic feature, but it is very important for the treatment if patient has developed pneumonia or any other type of uh, respiratory infection. So the question is then how do we diagnose? What is the, the diagnostic test? The diagnostic test is what we call as a RT-PCR. In our language, it is called as a reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction. You really don't have to worry. You just remember PCR as you will see in a lot of newspapers and all WhatsApp. Of course, nowadays uh, you get lots of right and wrong WhatsApp messages. Now, PCR is a polymerase chain reaction. Many people have this wrong impression that this uh, particular test is done in blood. Friends, no. This blood test is done like, this test is done like this. If you see on the left side, the, on the top one, this is nasopharyngeal. Nasopharyngeal is a, this is a nasal and this is a pharynx is a kind of a throat part, back part of throat. Here you can see the swab is taken. This is a nasopharyngeal swab and this is what is commonly advocated. But in some patients, uh, the oropharyngeal swab is also taken. Oropharyngeal is, you can see, this is an open mouth. Then you can see near the tonsil, you can, you take a swab from here. And then you see on the right side, these are the two test tubes in which these swabs are kept. And this is actually sent to the virology laboratory. Now, for those who want to know, the, the virology laboratory in uh, Gujarat right now are in uh, Ahmedabad and uh, Jamnagar, the medical colleges. But uh, having sensed the urgency and the need to test more and more people. I must appreciate the effort of the government, which has been really very, very proactive and dynamic. And they are also now, perhaps as per the news of, uh, which I read in Times of India today, uh, they are thinking, or maybe they already are giving permission to the private lab, because we need more and more people to be tested, and I'll take that later on. So you understand that PCR is the definitive diagnostic test. And that does not mean that everybody who has got a cough and cold should do this. Let your doctor or whoever is the concerned doctor will decide whether you really need this test or not. So now comes the treatment. The first statement may be a bit disappointing to you that there is no specific medications which are scientifically proven as yet. But there's a fantastic news coming in. There's a new antiviral called remdesivir. And then of course, lopinavir and ritonavir are actually basically used for the HIV infections. Oseltamivir or Tamiflu, as all of you know, which is used for swine flu, are being tried. And the emerging data of very positive response to chloroquine and hydrochloroquine is also coming up. And tocilizumab is also a drug, drug which is used in uh, autoimmune disease. At this juncture, I really want to pause for, for a while because I see lots of messages coming in WhatsApp. 
about chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. And after President Trump said that chloroquine uh, is approved by USFDA, let me tell you that, uh, of course, I don't deny the fact that there are tremendously encouraging results which are seen in the trials which have been carried out in the patients who have been given these medications. Uh, it has also come in few of the medical reputed journals. But US FDA has already given the statement that any drug to be called as a definitive curative medicine, you just can't just go by emotions. You have to do the scientific test and a lot of things have to be done before they are actually declared as a definitive curative test. But as it is said that it is emotionally indicated in the patients uh, of, uh, you know, the COVID-19. But I can tell you that uh, with the data that we have, especially these three, remdesivir, chloroquine, and the hydroxychloroquine, it looks like that uh, we are in for a good time as far as the treatment is concerned. But at this juncture, I would like to say that these are the drugs which are extremely promising, not only promising, the results are coming in which are thick and fast and are very good. But today, you cannot say 100% officially that these are the curative ones. One more thing which I want to clarify here, is that we are getting lots of questions and messages that uh, chloroquine being used as a prophylaxis. That means you take chloroquine every week and you will be prevented to get, uh, you know, this COVID-19. Now, I tell you, this is more anecdotal than scientific because there is no data as to prove this. So, you know, it's all your discretion. The medical science as of now cannot really give you the guideline that you take chloroquine and you will be prevented uh, from getting a corona. So, you know, at, at the moment, let's consider that more as a, an anecdotal. So we'll have to wait for longer follow-up and more scientific clinical studies to declare these agents as curative drugs for COVID-19. But as a doctor, let me tell you, as a patient, you also should understand that these three drugs have really given us a lot of big ray of hope. And I think we shall not be disappointed. So most important thing is that, that of course, the, the in and day out, you are seeing this and it would be still worth repeating. But I'll give you some of the scientific reasons why you should do this. So how, how would you protect? You should regularly and thoroughly clean your hands with 60% alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. 20 seconds. I repeat, 20 seconds. And I tell you, it's a long time. And... Many a times people don't wash hands properly. They just only wash hands, the palmer side or only the palms. They don't actually go into the back side of their hand. So you have to hand wash thoroughly from all the sides and for 20 long seconds. Uh, soap is any day better than 60% alcohol-based hand rub. But if it is not available, you can always use that. And why you should do that? Because washing your hands with soap and water or using alcohol-based hand rub kills the viruses that may be on your hands. Maintain at least three feet distance between yourself and any, anyone who is coughing or sneezing. Because when someone coughs or sneezes, they spray small liquid droplets from their nose or mouth, which may contain virus. If you are too close, you can breathe in the droplets, including the COVID-19 virus, if the person coughing has the disease. As I said before, avoid touching eyes, nose and mouth. And I gave you the reason that hands touch many surfaces and can pick up viruses. Once contaminated, hands can transfer the virus to your eyes, nose, or mouth. And from there, the virus can enter your body and can make you sick. Make sure you and the people around you follow good respiratory hygiene. This means covering your mouth and nose with your elbow or tissue when you cough or sneeze. Then dispose of the used tissue immediately. Please, 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 this is the most important thing. And this is the respiratory hygiene we need to inculcate, not only during times of corona, but in general. Anybody who is coughing, anybody who is having, who is sneezing, must use the mask. If not mask, then they should cover their face, you know, either with a handkerchief or tissue. And if nothing is available, use your elbow, but not your hands for the reasons already explained because droplets spread virus and by following good respiratory hygiene you protect the people around you from the viruses such as cold flu so actually basically you know you have to make sure that you don't spread this most important thing please stay home if you feel unwell if you have a fever, cough, difficulty in breathing, seek medical attention and call in advance and follow the directions of your local health authority. Very important. Please do not go by what, what WhatsApp says. Please do not go by what the non-scientific information guides you. Please only go by what is scientific, what comes from the official health authority. 
and national and local authorities will have the most up to date information on the situation in your area calling in advance will allow your healthcare provider to quickly direct you to the right health facility and this will also protect you and help prevent spread of viruses and other infection very very important keep up to date on the latest covid 9 hotspots cities or local areas where covid 19 is spreading widely very very important and if possible avoid traveling to these places especially if you are an older person or have diabetes heart or lung disease i said this before please 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 avoid unnecessary travel during this time it really is not called for it is not only unsafe for you but it is also unsafe for the community in general because this will help in having a community spread which india definitely cannot afford you have a higher chance of catching covid-19 if you have got a diabetes heart or lung disease and if you are an older person so as i said please stay indoor or my old you know people elderly people who have got the disease i urge you to stay indoor don't go out at least for next two weeks and that will definitely protect you then are you at risk of getting covid-19 well see who is at the risk of getting covid-19 obviously the first one you do not take precautions as mentioned there are some people who have this feeling that you know all these things are useless and nonsense i am never going to get corona please do not remain under this wrong illusion you must take the precautions as mentioned as directed by world health organization the local authorities and you undertake unnecessary travel that is something which should be totally avoided your immunity if it is low like your diabetic and has a blood pressure the pregnant lady the patients who are on immunosuppressive drugs patients who have got malignancies patients who are on chemotherapy patients who are on long term steroids are the people who their immunity is very low they should be doubly careful during this time and i would strongly request that please stay indoor totally for at least two weeks the community you live in does not adhere to official guidelines now we must command the initiative taken by our honorable prime minister today now what he has done by telling us about janta curfew he has done a tremendous job in making the entire people all the people realize that social distancing is so important for india at this juncture if we don't want the community spread to happen so when this official guideline has come from none other than prime minister himself it is our moral responsibility to really you know help and understand and obey and cooperate in whatever information or instructions are coming up so please do this so that we can help the you know stopping the community spread now if you come in contact with the people who have been to badly affected places like china italy spain iran london or some part of us if you are in touch with them those who have traveled last two weeks then you are if you have symptoms then definitely you are vulnerable So after knowing this let's see what covid-19 has done to the world tremendous isn't it 186 countries 286402 cases 11885 deaths and i'm telling you that these figures right now would be different they would be much more these are yesterday evening's figures overall mortality 4% but i really want to stress one point here that this mortality is perhaps not as much i'll tell you the reason because as and when as we will test more and more people more and more cases will be unearthed and you will find the death rate will not be as high so the all the authorities are of the firm opinion that eventually when this uh, you know endemic and madness ends the mortality rate would not be more than 1% which is a very 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 heartening feature the you know the god has gifted us about this covid 19 i've done a little exercise to let you know how the countries are faring look at italy is 8.54% mortality rate look at uh, iran 7.5% uh, mortality rate spain is at 4.35% china after 4% really has uh, really, you know done something wonderfully well and as uh, all of us know that for two days not even a single case has happened and uh, then uh, look at india is 1.8% USA is at 1.4 percent. South Korea is 1 percent, and look at Germany, 0.35 percent. And it's not that Germany has got only 20 and 30 cases, and that is 0.35. In fact, Germany has got as many as 18 to 20 thousand patients. So, if you really follow the right kind of uh, you know common sense 
and you adhere to the guidelines, you definitely can uh, take care of and harness this virus. So don't lose heart. Overall mortality eventually is not going to be more than 1% for sure. Now, seeing this proportion, should we be worried? And obviously, the, everybody is worried, and, and there's no reason why we should not be worried. But my point is, do not panic, for sure. Call caution and concern, yes, because you cannot have, you cannot be overconfident, well, nothing is going to happen. So caution and concern is yes. So let's first go on to the second part. Why caution and concern? Because I tell you that this virus has come with a lot of challenges. Now, what are those challenges? Let me tell you. This is spreading very rapidly all over the globe and it has affected economy badly. The reason why this is spreading is the, the way it actually it, you know, transfers. It transmits as we already saw before. Especially the fomite transmission is also very strong and uh, you know, powerful way it is transmitted. The virus is new. In fact, I told you that November 2019, the medical fraternity was totally unknown of this virus. And some of you are non-medical would say, why this is happening? This is happening because the virus is also muted. Viruses also are very smart. If they feel that the human beings are able to, you know, to have a victory over them, they mutate and create a new form of virus, which is not known to us and they call HEVO. So we still have learned a lot about this virus, which will take some time. And a possible mutation virus cannot be ruled out. And once again, I really don't want to scare you, but this possibility always stays with any viral outbreak. That, that possible mutation of virus can make it even more difficult to, you know, harness. Next, our challenge is it is not so easy to make vaccine against COVID-19 very fast. Safety, efficacy have to be ascertained and hence will take some time. I tell you that, you know, it's very important that uh, whenever you make a vaccine, that vaccine should not make the person sick. And that's why you have to do lots of trials. You have to have the volunteers, healthy volunteers to do this. Uh, President Trump said that vaccine would be available in no time. And that actually, you know, everybody was joyous. But honestly speaking, USFD has also, also given the statement that as of now, it will take even World Health Organization also given statement that it will take one year minimum. But if you can come out with this vaccine in one year, I tell you, it's a big, big achievement. And I am telling you that it is it will happen for sure. We are going to get vaccine in one year's time. But right now, vaccine is not is not possible at all to create. As of now, uh, medicine we have already discussed. And now there are lots of, as I said, the rays of hope, the chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine and remdesivir. The virulence and transmission will shift over the times. Now, we cannot predict because the virulence and transmission might change. Might change. I'm saying might change. So that is the unpredictability that we are charting on. And the problem is that most cases are either asymptomatic, subsymptomatic, undiagnosed, and transmitted before the onset of symptoms. If you understand this statement and this sentence, you know, this makes it this virus extremely challenging. I'll explain you this one. For example, somebody who has got a you know, COVID-19 virus in him. What will happen? The patient or person has not still developed the symptoms. That means he's called as asymptomatic, but he's infective. He still can shed virus and through, through fomites, he can actually infect other people. So how do you find these patients? And this is the challenge the world is having. And this is the reason why this virus is spreading like a wildfire. And that is the reason why social distancing is becoming so, so, so important. This is the most important question. The doctors are asking, the society is asking, the patients are asking, the virologists are asking that can we do better with this virus, which is a longer incubation period, but with as yet undetermined ratio of inapparent cases to apparent cases. I'll repeat, inapparent cases to apparent cases not known and unknown rate of asymptomatic spread, the biggest, biggest challenge that the medical fraternity has. And the answer to this question is so critical because without the ability to prevent such spread, we will cross a threshold where pandemic prevention becomes impossible. So, but don't lose heart. Every scientist, every virologist, everybody in the world is right now 24-7 working on this virus. And I'm telling you that eventually we are going to harness and be a cause of victory over this virus. But as I said, do not panic. A certain no to panic, friends, because of the reason that let me tell you. And I've got reasons to say why you should not panic. First, 
virus is contagious yes because of the transmission mode but it is not deadly 1% mortality is very very less compared to the viruses that we have faced so far in the history of the world so don't be disheartened because that is something which you should keep in your mind most important thing 80% of the affected persons develop only very mild symptoms heartening isn't it 80% of affected persons develop only very mild symptoms only a little bit of cold little bit of cough little bit of myalgia nothing beyond that mortality rate i said is very low as compared to the other epidemics proper personal care and i am using the word common sense approach if your prime minister says social distancing and you say oh who cares well that's not a common sense approach the proper personal care and common sense approach can definitely keep you away from getting infected so please please follow the local health guidelines and cooperate remdesivir chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine have shown extremely promising results the papers are pouring in the medical community is really getting excited although we right now cannot say that these drugs can be declared as a positive curative but i'm telling you that these drugs have shown so much of hope that i am 100% certain that within short time we would be curing covid-19 with these drugs now at this juncture it would be very interesting to see that how the world has faced coronaviruses then let me talk about the three the first was sars and all of us know that it happened in 2003 and they almost uh, 8100 people died the pay, uh, i'm sorry 8100 people were infected number is slow low but look at the mortality almost 10% of the people died in mars which happened in saudi arabia which started because of the camels the bat gave it to camels and camels gave it to humans was in 2012 and it was almost 2500 cases cases number less but look at the mortality almost 34% people died the virus was so strong and now we have got covid it is 2020 the cases are almost closing into 300000 i have written for mortality mortality 4.1 as of today but i tell you that this would become 1% or less for sure now the sars that you see in 2003 and covid-19 in 2020 both these viruses are pretty similar both were actually transmitted by bats both started in china and that's why the sars was the virus sars cov1 and covid-19 is sars cov2 since both the viruses are pretty similar we feel that many you know characteristics and behavior of the sars virus might be seen in covid-19 and we already have started observing that the virus uh, the way it actually spread the way it behaves so friends it is more contagious sure but it is very less deadly and that is very very heartening and friends we really have faced epidemics by epidemics pandemics by pandemics and we have sur- you survived look at spanish flu in 1918 killed almost 50 million people look at asian flu in 57 58 two million people killed hong kong flu 68 69 one million people killed sars in 2003 800 people killed swine flu in 2009 we started from usa killed almost 200 like 84000 people mars in saudi arabia started 2012 1250 people killed but that was 34% of the people the most deadly virus in last about 30 40 years has been ebola and that is uh, it happened twice 2013 and 16 in africa they actually contained the transmission but what happened was the number of cases were only 23000 against which 11000 people died so that was the mortality rate of 50% the most deadly virus and at that time i still remember bill gates saying that the world will be killed by the microbes and not by missiles we have to be ready for endemics the covid 19 is now 2019 and 20 and i can tell you and i hope and i pray to god that this death number is less and less and less now i'll come to some of the questions which are very commonly asked to make the things very simple for you the first question which is asked that who should wear a mask very clear cut guidelines persons with covid 19 type symptoms like cough and cold not that you have got covid 19 but if you got cough fever cough or cold you should wear the mask the persons who are looking after someone who may have covid 19 obviously should wear mask 
and here i must clarify very boldly is healthy persons with no symptoms should not wear mask let me repeat healthy persons with no symptoms should not wear mask there is a worldwide shortage of masks so world health organization urges people to use mask wisely please cooperate and let me tell you that the kind of mask that you have are you should know this is for non medical people this is from the left side is a surgical mask this is called as a n95 as you commonly seen everybody is hunting for n95 but friends let me tell you n95 fits more tightly and prevent the weather from inhaling smaller air on infectious particles but n95 are not recommended for use by the general public it is definitely not recommended surgical mask is good enough for you and only for the people who are mentioned on the left side this is also another question which is asked as who who already said is from few hours to few days but somebody has come out with some data in air it is for 3 hours for copper it is 4 hours on cardboard it is 24 hours stainless steel it is 2 to 3 days and plastic it is 3 days so this is this much time that you know virus can actually stay on the surface very common question which i also have been asked what happens suppose if you get a package from covid 19 affected area for example italy and china should i accept that should i receive it is it safe you know what happened in usa is few days back that people have started rejecting everything which was coming on amazon saying that those bubble packing which was coming from china could be having virus it is totally a wrong concept it is definitely safe to receive because the likelihood of an infected person contaminating commercial goods is low and the risk of catching the virus that causes covid-19 from package that has been moved traveled and exposed to different conditions and temperature is also low so there is a clear cut guideline that you definitely can receive this kind of package very very important and very interesting question everybody is asking this and everybody is hopeful for the right reasons that will covid spread decline or stop in summer well it is not yet known now this is coming from who once again it is not yet known whether the weather and temperature impact the spread of covid-19 some other viruses like common cold and flu spread more during the cold weather months but that does not mean it is impossible to become sick with these viruses during other months let me make very clear what they say at this time it is not known whether the spread of covid-19 will decrease when the weather becomes warmer at this time it is not known whether the spread of 19 will decrease when the weather becomes warmer so let's not be complacent let's not be over confident that when the summer comes and virus goes off there is much more to learn about trans transmissibility severity and other features associated with covid 19 and investigations are ongoing is covid 19 patient still infectious after recovering probably to some extent though the first batch of studies are far from conclusive it is said that the traces of the virus could persist in the body for up to two weeks after the symptoms had vanished and for the patients who had critical disease it can be up to 24 days can a person catch cold catch covid 19 second time that means reinfection very important question the centers for disease control that is cdc stress that our immune response to this particular disease is not clearly understood it everything depends upon the immunity the type of antibodies the amount of antibodies that you actually generate and how long these antibodies are going to give us the protection against reinfection the patients with mers obviously were not reinfected and we are not sure whether the similar thing will happen with covid 19 one thing that might help clarify the immunity question is developing serological tests for antibodies to sars cov2 the covid 19 pathogen and it would uh, not only provide more information about individual immune system but we will also know whether this immunity is going to last and uh, i tell you that uh, singapore is the first country who has started developing this kind of uh, antibodies tests now very important and pertinent question when can a patient go back to work the cdc defines recovery from cvc covid 19 as an absence of fever with no use of uh, fever reducing medications for three full days improvement in other symptoms such as coughing shortness of breath a period of seven full days since symptoms for last since first appeared two negative swab tests on consecutive days 
two negative swap tests on consecutive days are considered as the all clear meaning self isolation can end and put the patient can theoretically begin having contact with others including at work but in practice many governments including india are encouraging remote working even among healthy patients in addition anyone living with someone with coronavirus is also advised to self isolate for 14 days following the appearance of symptoms so let's right now the answer should be 14 days now what are the stages of epidemic everybody should understand this the stage 1 is the cases imported from affected countries for example somebody who has traveled from china to india and gets virus from there is a stage 1 the stage 2 the person who comes to india from china would have a local transmission that means he comes in contact with few people and actually transmit this patients this virus to them and makes them positive stage 3 then more and more people actually are infected the, you know people actually mingle more people go people actually crowd and they don't understand people go into the malls and these infected people keep on infecting more and more and more people and there is a community spread that is stage 3 and stage 4 this is become so epidemic that there is no clear end point friends we are at stage 2 right now and we are at a very 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 critical stage this this janta curfew is nothing but to make people understand that if we don't want to go from stage 2 to stage 3 this is the time everybody is to be have to behave everybody has to make sure that we follow the instruction everybody make sure that we don't go out if it is not necessary because we don't want to go from stage 2 to stage 3 god forbid and if we go from stage 2 to stage 3 india is going to be in a very catastrophic condition so it's all in our hands only government cannot do everything we have to support the government's efforts to make sure that we do not pass on from stage 2 to stage 3 everything is in our hands this is the average number of people that affect infected person transmits to virus 2 if it is less than r is less than one epidemic will burn out and that's what we are aiming at if it is one epidemic will continue if it is more than one epidemic will increase exponentially current estimate is about 2.5 we just can't afford this because it will go exponentially high because what is r r is nothing a reflection of both the virus and also human behavior i think this is most important human behavior is going to decide our behavior is going to decide our attitude is going to decide whether we will go in from stage 2 to stage 3 intervention such as social distancing and improved hygiene will decrease now let's there are two examples which will prove the point the first example the control of spread of covid 19 in china proves that r is a modifiable number it is a modifiable number that can be reduced by effective public health intervention imagine china which was so catastrophically devastated by covid 19 has no no patients with virus for last two days it's a fantastic public health intervention and we must applaud that the all of us know the diamond princess cruise ship which is still harbored in, in japan outside japan they were the people who were all corona or covid 19 infected people and that actually clearly illustrates that in a cramped quarter with inadequate hygiene will definitely increase the spread and that precisely what janta curfew is talking to you please do not mingle please do the social distancing as much as possible at least for next 2 to 3 weeks and that is going to be very very crucial for the entire country our challenge is this i tell you that we have to test more and more people everybody understands this if you look at this data you know this is the number of tests which are done per done per million people us is doing only five tests which is very surprising the most powerful country most affluent country in the world ends up doing only five tests per million as against that look at south korea is an example to everybody almost 4000 tests per million people china doing 3000 tests per million people and uh, india is doing at the moment one test per million people and this is our challenge that we somehow have to test more and more people because there are asymptomatic people there are very very mildly symptomatic people who have to be under to prevent the community spread if you look at the number which is just yesterday's slide the 20th march india has actually tested 14514 people as against almost 3 lakh 20000 patients by other countries so this is where the our challenge lies 
government they obviously is taking a lot of efforts and putting more and more laboratories and as i understand the times of india said that uh, they are now going to allow the private laboratories to do this testing if we can test more and more people if we can unearth more and more people although they are asymptomatic they are less infected but they should be isolated and this community spread can be prevented and this is the biggest challenge that we have at the moment and those who are the students of mathematics here would be much better than me if you see both the curves the area under curve is same for both but if you look at the right curve it's a flat curve so this is a exponential rise in the number of patients which we can't afford if it happened this way then gradually we will be able to take our harness and victory over virus so i always believe that it is going to be our wits against corona genes you know corona genes are going to play with us but our wits will definitely take care and i am sure and i believe and i hope and i pray that our wit has the last laugh as a doctor i really want to draw your attention to something at this stage friends heart attack and paralysis causes 15.2 million deaths per year every year the heart disease because of smoking especially causes 3 million deaths per year for last many many years the diabetes related disease are 1.6 million deaths for many many years the road injuries 1.4 million deaths for year every every year and in fact this number is increasing every year so friends we are having covid every day for so many years and we are not even you know very careful about it so isn't this a time that you wake up the corona has given you a wake up call you are worried about the very 1% mortality but you are not worried about the type the amount of death that you, people are having just because of their lifestyle so this is the time to wake up take care of your body which is no less than a temple which is a base biggest gift to you by the almighty god so take care take care of yourself that's something very very important and the six things which uh, who has said be informed be prepared be smart and be safe be ready to fight covid 19 be supportive be careful be alert and be kind be ready to fight covid 19 i would urge if at all you want to go online if you want to have want to have any information please go only on official websites either of the local health authorities government health authorities or go on to this particular website which is a world health organization don't believe what whatsapp tells you don't believe that our algo will do this don't believe garlic will do this so on and so forth just be with the scientific information shun off all the fake news don't even forward them social distancing is something very important and i feel that we have met the enemy and it is us let's not we become enemy of ourselves make sure that we keep ourselves safe we keep the community safe by right kind of social behavior by right type of common sense and let me end my this talk by our sanskrit famous and this is what the hindu culture is all about sarve bhavantu sukhinah may all be happy sarve santu niramaya may everybody be healthy sarve bhadrani paschantu may everybody see the spiritually uplifting ma kashchit dukh bhag bhavet may nobody suffer om shanti 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 may god give us power may god give us wisdom may god give us common sense to fight this virus and make sure that not only we stay safe but the community stay safe i am extremely thankful to all of you for your patient listening and i hope and i believe that i have really added to your knowledge which would definitely help you to fight this virus fight this calamity with the scientific knowledge that you have gained today thank you very much once again